For this video, what I want to do is go through a one proportion Z test. Um, and I'm going to use the TI Inspire graphing calculator to help us find the results of our standardized test statistic as well as our p value and also to help with drawing the model. So, with this, I don't like to just go over showing you how to get the answers in the calculator because a lot of times when you're going through this, you do have to show all the mechanics. So, I also want to go through that as well. So I know I told you that we were using the one proportion Z test, but the way that I know that I want to show you the evidence is by checking the conditions. So we're given that a medical researcher claims that less than 25% of U.S. adults are smokers. In a random sample of 500 U.S. adults, 19.8% reply that they are smokers. At alpha equals 0.05, is there enough evidence to support the claim? So with this, the way that I know that this is a test for proportions and not for the means is the fact that I have a percentage given to me in the problem. So when your claim is about a proportion or a percent, that should point towards using a one proportion Z test. I also know that it's only one proportion because we only have one sample that we are working with. So the conditions that we have for the one proportion Z test is that we do have to have a random sample. It's important that we used a random sample to control bias. Okay, and it does say that they are U.S. adults. It wouldn't help to get it from somewhere else in the world because that would not go with our claim. Okay, the other one that's the most important is in order for the li central limit theorem to kick in, n times p has to be greater than or equal to 5 and n times q also has to be greater than or equal to 5. So basically what this is saying is the number of successes has to be greater than or equal to 5 and the number of failures. So the P and the Q always come from our claim. So since 25% is our proportion that's in our claim, we're going to say that P is 0.25. Okay, N is our sample size. So it tells us that we have 500. And then to find Q, we have to do 1 minus P. So we would end up with 0.75. And we will use these again later when we are calculating, calculating the standardized test statistic. Okay, so if I plug in those values, 500 times 0.25 gives me 125, which is definitely greater than or equal to 5. And 500 times 0.75 is equal to 375, which again is greater than or equal to 5. It's important to show out that you actually checked them and not just put down the conditions and put a check mark next to them. The only way that you can really show that you um, checked them is by writing them on your paper. All right, so once we have established that both conditions are met, we can say that we are using or we can use the one proportion Z test. And basically the reason for this part right here is we're using the normal model to approximate a binomial distribution. This is binomial because we have success and failures, which is a discrete distribution. And um, the normal distribution is a continuous distribution. So in order to be able to use it to approximate, you have to have this part met right here. All right, so our next step is to set up the null in the alternative. The null and the alternative always come from the claim. Okay, so our claim is that our proportion is less than 0.25. So this is the claim written in symbolic notation. So now we have to figure out where that goes. If it's a statement of equality, it always goes in the null. If it's a statement of inequality, it always goes in the alternative. So we would say that P is less than 0.25. Um, some textbooks use uh, pi instead of P. That's acceptable. That's the Greek letter for P. Um, but a lot of textbooks just use P because using pi for anything other than 3.14 is confusing. All right, so this is our claim, and I always write that because when it comes to the interpretation, it's important to understand where your claim is. And then the null always has to have equality, and it's the complement of the alternative. 
When we get to it, we will shade the left tail, but like I said, I'm going to do this in the calculator in order to um, get the results, and that will show us how to shade our P value, which is different than the P in the null in the alternative. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and draw out my model, and I'm gonna write down my formula, because a lot of times, um, Professors or teachers will require that you show your work. So in case you have to do that, I want to make sure that you have all of the tools that you need. All right, so P hat minus P and then PQ over N. So we already wrote down what P and Q are. So we know that P is 0.25 and we know that Q is 0.75. And we know that n is 500. So the only thing that we are missing is p hat. So let's go back up here. p hat is 19.8%, and we always write this as a decimal. So this is going to be our p hat. And we also need to write down our alpha level because we will use that to help us make our decision. So our alpha is 0 0.05, and our p hat is 0.198. Okay. And when we go into our calculator to run the test, we do have to know what X is. X is our number of successes. Okay, And in order to find it when you're not given it, you would take your N times your P hat. So I would just put in 500 times 0.198, and this value does have to be a whole number. If it is not a whole number, then you must round to the nearest whole number. So let me get my calculator in order to find the answer to this, as well as the p-value, as well as being able to shade it um, in our drawing. Okay, so our p-value, remember, is the probability of getting our p-hat that is less than 0.198 if the mean were actually true. I mean, sorry, if the null were actually true, not the mean, this is proportions. All right, so when I grab my calculator, I'm gonna go ahead and do this in a lists and spreadsheet screen. That's the way this calculator will allow you to draw the model, okay? And then I'm gonna go into menu and statistics, and then I'm going to choose stat tests. So that was menu, statistics, stat tests. And then we would find the one proportion Z test, which is option five. Our P naught is always the value that's in the null hypothesis. So that's our 0.25. Okay. X, like I said, this is the 0.198 times 500. And if it doesn't automatically put a value in here and you get an error, this calculator doesn't necessarily change it. So you may want to check this before to see if it's a whole number. If it gives you an error, it's because of this right here that it's not a whole number. N is 500. And our alt alternate hypothesis should match our alternative hypothesis that we had. So our proportion should be less than our P naught. Okay, and then I'm going to click the draw. The draw will allow us to um, see the model in our calculator and it will shade the p-value. And then when we hit OK, it gives us our values here. You can kind of see the results over here, the negative 2.6853, the 0 0.0036. If you would like to see it more clearly, you can hit Control and the up arrow, and then click on, sorry, Control and up arrow, it was already highlighted. Click Menu and number four on Group. Okay, and then you can see it more clearly. You can see that very, very little is shaded, and that's because our p-value is 0 0.0036, so that's how much area has been shaded under the curve. The z is the negative 2.6853, so that's the result of plugging this into our calculator. Okay, so that's our standardized test statistic. And over here, basically what we would do is we would shade our p-value which is the 0 
and this is approximately 0 0.0036. You also need to label that this is our z-score. You could also label it with your p hat, but most of the time we just use our z-scores. Okay, so now to make our decision, what we are going to do is we are going to compare the p-value to alpha. Okay, so I have 0 0.0036 compared to my alpha of 0 0.05, and we can see that this is definitely less than 0 0.05, so any time that is less than, we reject the null hypothesis. Okay, a p-value of 0 0.0036 means that this happens by chance alone in this population where the mean is 0.25 only 0.36 percent of the time which is very unlikely to happen just by chance alone so the evidence is strong enough in order for us to reject the null it doesn't seem like this is a um, valid argument based on this sample remember we are basing this on samples so it is possible to make a mistake okay um and those are your types of errors that you want to be looking for. But when they're this strong, a lot of times that's strong evidence and um, it's pretty convincing. All right, so the last thing that we have to do is interpret. And this is the part where you're telling the world what you found. So at 5%, I avoid using words like alpha and p-values in my interpretations just because of the fact that most people in the real world don't understand that. So I want everybody to be able to understand. Okay, so we used a 5% threshold. Anytime you use the word reject, you're going to say there is enough evidence. Okay. If you said fail to reject, then you would say there is not enough evidence. Now we go back and look where our claim is. Since our claim is about the alternative hypothesis, we use the word support. So there is enough evidence to support the claim that less than 25% of US adults are smokers. All right, just a quick recap. Remember when you are doing hypothesis tests, majority of the time, your professors or teachers are going to require you to actually show out the work. So make sure you get in the habit of checking conditions, naming the test, setting up your null and your alternative, showing the work for the standardized test statistic, and then either finding the p-value or the rejection region in order to help you make your decision. Once you have made your decision, make sure that you go back and interpret it. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics that you would like me to cover, please let me know that as well.